Hi, my name is Jason Weatherholt, and I'm the worship minister here at Greenwood Christian Church. Whether you've joined us via our online campus or you're here with us in person at our Avert campus, we're glad we get to spend a little bit of time with you today. At the end of our service, we'll have a time of communion. If you're here in person, you can grab those elements on your way out in the breezeway. If you've joined us online, then you can grab up elements somewhere around you today. And that is our chance to be reminded of the body and blood of our Savior given for us. If you'd like to participate in offering as a part of your worship experience, you can do so through the app or online. Or if you're here in person, you can drop your gift in the baskets on your way out. Here at Green Christian Church, we want to help you take the next step in your journey of faith. Maybe that's a first-time decision for baptism. Maybe that's just a chance to talk with someone. Or maybe you want to get involved. If you head to greenwoodchristian.com slash next steps, you can fill out a form and continue along in your journey of faith. We're glad that you have joined us today, and we look forward to worshiping with you. Well, good morning. Would you stand with us today as we worship our Lord? Yeah. 
put our hands together this morning. Let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Please be seated. Hi, I'm Logan. I'm getting baptized because I want Jesus in my heart. You know, a, a long time ago, somebody um, asked an important question. That somebody was Jesus. He asked his best friends, who do people say that I am? And they began to say, well, some think that you're Elijah. Some think that you're the John the, John the Baptist. And, and finally he said, but who do you think that I am? And that's when Peter made what we call the great confession. It's what I want you to repeat after me. It's, it's, he said this, I believe, repeat, say I believe, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the, Christ the, Son of the, God, the Son of the living God. 
John, uh, Logan, I'm going to baptize you here in just a second for the three presents that we talked about in my office. You get one for the past, which is all of your sins are completely forgiven. You get one for the future. Someday you get to go be with Jesus and live in heaven. And I hope in, for you that's, oh, maybe 90 years from now, a long time into the future. And then for right now, Jesus is going to send his Holy Spirit into your life to help you become the young man that he wants you to be. Does that sound good? All right. I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for all those presents that I just mentioned. Congratulations, buddy. Yay! Would you pray with me, please? Father, we thank you for this day and for bringing us here and allowing us to watch online. And today we're going to hear from your word about uh, the fact that you are the good shepherd. And in our culture today, we don't know a lot about shepherding. But you teach us, again, through your word that uh, sheep know their shepherd and they follow their voice. And we have so many voices in our lives today that call to us and try to lead us in different directions. Father, I think of social media and uh, influencers who are paid to get us to, to follow them and follow down a path to the news that we hear about, um, to our coworkers and friends. Uh, we all have an opinion and we all uh, at times have become wise in our own eyes. But I pray that as we hear your word today, that we would be prompted by your spirit to get to know you more fully uh, by spending time with you in your word, in prayer, and Father, just in silence and solitude, maybe a walk in nature to allow uh, your spirit to speak to our spirit and to hear your call on our lives uh, more clearly and more completely, and then to obey that. So, Father, just please be with us this morning. Uh, continue to guide our lives. Help us to become more discerning of your voice and where we should go. Father, we love you so, and we thank you for all that you do for us. And we thank you especially for Jesus. Amen. Well, good morning. My name is Paul, and whether you are joining us online or here in the room, welcome. Uh, May 6th is National Day of Prayer, and we are excited to be able to get together with some of the other local churches at the parking lot, the corner of Maine and Madison in Old Town Greenwood. Uh, we're going to get together at 7 a.m. on May 6th, and we're going to pray uh, for our community, for our leaders, for our families, for our churches, and we are excited to have that opportunity. If you are able to join us, again, that's May 6th at 7 a.m. We'd love for you to join us for that hour time slot just to pray together with them. And if May 6th is a day of prayer, then May 7th can be a day of praises and feast for us guys. We have our annual steak night coming up on May 7th. I want to encourage you to get signed up for that on our website. Uh, you bring a steak, we'll supply the grill, we'll cook some food, we'll hang out, and we'll get to listen to a speaker. And that speaker this year is Gary Varvel. He was a cartoonist for the Indianapolis Star for 24 years, a very engaging speaker. I'm personally looking forward to that time uh, to get to spend together and to listen to him. So again, go to the website, get signed up. Now would you stand with us as we continue to worship our Lord this morning. Heart, I'm tethered to. 
good to be with you guys this morning. Usually I'm down on the student end, so it's nice to see adults. And so I'm also honored that I got to ask to start our new series in Core 52. If you need a Core 52 book, we have those available. You can follow along with us. And we're super excited to start this new series in it called Uncommon. It's going to be a series on leadership. And boy, do I have a leadership story to tell you. I went to Cincinnati Bible College to get my degree in ministry, and after my senior year, I had one more senior project left to complete. It was a year-long internship under a worship minister. I was so excited to take a whole year to learn in a church setting under a mentor what church was going to be like, what ministry was going to be like, and then I got to the church. My start to ministry was rough to say the least. When I got to the church, by De- I got there in August, and by December, the children's minister had left, 
And the very worship minister I was under decided to take another church. And I couldn't go with him. And so I had to work it out with the college and with the church I was at that I would stay on as the interim music director until I could graduate, get ordained, and become an official minister. And so I regrouped after that, got ready for the next year. I was excited for the next year. It was going to be the best year. And then I got married. Now, that was the good part. That was the great part. I I love my wife, and we have been strong for 19 years. It's been awesome. But many of you know, after we got back from the honeymoon, I got ordained, and then two weeks later, my dad passed away. And it wasn't soon after that that the discipleship minister at the church left. Our two support staff that we had at the church left. And on one Sunday morning, nine of the 13 elders got up and said they were leaving the church and leaving the eldership. And I learned very quickly, leadership matters. There were a lot of ugly meetings. I saw one meeting where one of the elders actually tried to hit the senior minister. He had to be restrained. I heard language that would make the guys that I played basketball in the Cincinnati parks blush. It was not the start to ministry that I had envisioned. And like I said, I learned very quickly that leadership matters. And good leadership Good leadership is essential for any organization, but especially a church. Um, The church of about 900 people went down to about 150. And I'd imagine that most of us in this room, if not all of us, have probably experienced leadership failures whether it was your own leadership or someone else's. Uh, And a few weeks back on the social medias, I uh, found this clip from The Call of the Wild, the the movie that was released earlier. And I just wanted to show this clip just so we're all on the same page with this. Let's check it out. Like I said, some of us or all of us have probably had bosses or leaders like that first dog. Whether they're incompetent, immoral, mean, power hungry, wrong, or worse. I don't think it's a big revelation this morning that we have a leadership crisis today. We see it in politics. We see it in religion. We see it in our schools and universities, and in our workplaces, and even in our homes. It seems to me like everyone's just jockeying for position and power. That everybody wants to be the top dog. That everybody wants to be the boss. Leaders seem to fall with major moral failures, seems like, every day. Inside the church and outside the church. Abuse by leaders seems to be on the rise It's heartbreaking to follow someone and trust them only to have it all destroyed in one second with a bad decision or a bad action. I've heard it said that it takes years to gain influence, but it only takes one second to destroy it all. And see, that's the problem. I think we have grown skeptical and cynical about anyone who claims to be or is by position a leader. So today we're going to start a new series on Core 52 called Uncommon, and it's going to be about leadership. I'm so glad we're going to be talking about this. You know, many people pursue greatness, accomplishments, significance, and success. And those are good things when they're aimed in the right direction. However, the life God calls us to ask us to follow a very different, less traveled path to achieve those things. You see, in God's kingdom, the way to be great 
goes against our nature and goes against popular opinion. You see, in God's kingdom, east is up, left is purple. The, the ladder to success in God's kingdom is not only upside down, it's totally different than anything else we've experienced. And so over the next four weeks, we're going to explore what it looks like to be successful leaders in God's kingdom. It's uncommon indeed. Last week, Matt Giebler, the senior minister here, wrapped up the Christology series. And if you remember, and you were here, he talked about the first two kings of Israel, Saul, the people's choice, and David, the shepherd turned king who God chose. Neither were perfect leaders. Saul, when we were introduced to him in 1 Samuel 9, he was actually introduced to us as a donkey wrangler. He was chasing three stray donkeys for his father. When we're introduced to David, he was the youngest son who was tending the sheep of his father, Jesse. One was chasing donkeys. One was tending sheep. I think that's interesting. And I think it's an interesting bridge into this chapter, chapter 11 of Core 52, where we look at Psalm 23. I grew up singing a song at VBS. I don't know if you remember this song, but it went like this. I want to be a sheep. Ba, ba, I want to be a sheep, ba, ba, I want to be a sheep, ba, ba, I want to be a sheep. Now the lyrics were really easy, so I could catch them and I could get them. The motions were okay, they were kind of weird. But you talk about a song that has not aged well. In 2021, it's not good to be a sheep. In fact, that's like one of the biggest insults right now, especially on social media, that you can call someone when you just don't agree with them. You're a sheep. You just blindly follow whatever, whatever you hear. It's not a good thing to be a sheep. People and their causes always let you down. You have to fact check and double fact check and be careful not to be led astray or to be made look foolish. And you know what? I actually agree. I believe, I believe society has come to the right conclusion. People will let you down. None of us are 100% trustworthy. We should be careful about who we select and who we follow as leaders. But what if? What if there was a being that had absolute power and never abused it? What if there was a being that made incredible promises and never broke any of them? What if there was a leader we could trust 100% of the time? What if there was a perfect shepherd for the sheep? Then, maybe it wouldn't be so bad to be a sheep. Maybe, maybe today we're going to look at a very familiar psalm, but I don't want you to go on autopilot because of its familiarity. Whether we've had it memorized for years, or whether this is the first time we've actually looked at it outside of a funeral service, I hope we can dig deeper and see the truths of being shepherded and being a shepherd from Psalm 23. It's called the Shepherd's Psalm, and it's by David. And I'd ask us to, to read it together. It'll be up here on the screens. Let's say it together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. See, I don't believe this scripture was ever meant to be relegated to just a funeral service. Now, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm still going to read this at funeral services. It brings great comfort in those times. But man, it is so much more applicable than that. This is a poem about how God leads, how he loves. It's, it's the good shepherd, our God, and his son, Jesus even claims that title for himself as part of his divinity in John 10. 
but I'm getting ahead of myself. First, let's talk about sheep herding. I found a picture of a shepherd, because I don't know a lot of shepherd friends, and uh, I think it's up there. Yeah, there he is. You can barely see him in the background. Something I learned about shepherds, they actually usually lead from the front, whereas a cowboy or a wrangler usually leads from the back. I thought that was interesting. Shepherding is a profession most of us know nothing about. In fact, everything I know about shepherding came from Sam the Sheepdog. Do you remember Sam the Sheepdog? There he is. Yeah. And I always thought that was Wiley Coyote, but that's not Wiley Coyote. I guess it's a cousin or I don't know. But that's where I learned about shepherding. But in Bible times, shepherding was common. Good shepherds provided for the health and safety of their flock. They provided food and water for them. I learned that sheep actually prefer still waters because moving water is dangerous to them and they won't drink from it. Shepherds get dirty, not just physically, but in Jewish custom, they were ceremonially unclean. Shepherds are tough. They protect and they guard the flock. They lift the sheep when they need to. They walk or they run all day, herding the flock. A good shepherd risks their lives by putting themselves between the predator and the flock. They risk falling from a cliff or being sucked in an undercurrent trying to save a stuck sheep. And shepherds were the first to hear of the Messiah's birth according to Scripture. And shepherds have tools for their trade. Here you're going to see a picture of a shepherd's rod and a shepherd's staff. Now the shepherd's rod and staff had many purposes, but the shepherd's rod was very similar to a policeman's club. It could be dipped in dyes and it actually helped them count the sheep. But it was also used as a weapon to guard the sheep. Many believe the shepherd's rod actually inspired the king's scepter. And in my studies, I found that in the ancient Near East and in Israel, the shepherd metaphor was used for kings. Kings were to be shepherds of their people. What if we read the 23rd Psalm like that? The Lord is my king. David, the king of Israel, is announcing that God is the king of kings. He is the shepherd king of the shepherd king. The shepherd's staff was usually a longer stick. It's about five foot six and usually used as a walking cane or a help for that. But it could also handle the sheep with the crook on the end. You could easily redirect a sheep if he was going the wrong way. But it could also be used to protect the sheep. And once you start looking, shepherding is all over Scripture. Psalm 95, 7 says, He is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Isaiah 40, 11 says, He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. Acts 20, 28 tells us to be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. Bad shepherds were rebuked harshly in Scripture. Jeremiah 23, 1, Woe to the shepherd who destroys and scatters the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. You see, God's leadership principles look much different than ours. People choose a king, but God chooses a shepherd. People value power, but God values serving and sacrifice. People value wealth, God values generosity. People look at qualifications. God chooses the unqualified. People look for selfish gain. God looks for leaders who will protect and serve others. People value pride. God values humility. Think of all the heroes of the Old Testament. Some of the biggest names in the Old Testament were shepherds. Of course, we have Abel, the first shepherd. But then think about Abraham. Think about Moses. Think about Jacob. Think about David. And in a very figurative sense, Jesus is also called a shepherd. If you have your Bibles this morning, you can turn to John 10. We're going to camp out there for a little bit. Jesus tells us a parable about the good shepherd, who is the door in which the sheep enter. In verse 3, we hear his voice and he calls us his own by name and leads us. 
But since people didn't understand what Jesus was saying and claiming, he explains it like he had to many times in verses 7 through 18. In verse 7, Jesus finally says, I am the gate for the sheep. In verse 9, he says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. In verse 11, he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. In verse 14, he says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. And after verse 36, he actually had to escape the place where he was speaking because the religious leaders understood that he was claiming to be the good shepherd, that he was claiming to be God. And to them, that was blasphemy. But to us on this side of the cross, on this side of the resurrection, we know it's truth. He is God. Looking at John 10 and Psalm 23, I think we see three things quickly that shepherds do. A good shepherd leads. The shepherd knows where he's going. The shepherd knows the destination is worth the journey, and he does know the journey is going to be difficult. Pain and sickness will happen. Financial hardship, cancer, broken relationships, betrayal, sadness, anxiety, depression, gossip, all kinds of evil may come across our path. He knows because he experienced it. But the good shepherd knows that the destination will be worth the journey. He knows he also has the power to lead us through those valleys. We have to trust the good shepherd, even in moments of doubt. We trust that he is leading us to green pastures and to quiet waters, that he is and will restore our souls in his goodness. He's leading us ultimately to heaven. Well, a good shepherd not only leads, but a good shepherd feeds. Just as a shepherd finds green pastures for the flock, so Jesus has given us his word, the scripture. It is life to those who are perishing. Jesus has given us the life-giving words of Scripture. It's a well that never runs dry. And as Christians, the Word of God is our food and drink. Jesus says that He is the bread of life and that He is the living water. But too many of us are sick and dying because we are not feeding and drinking on His Word. The shepherd can lead you to it, but it's up to each individual if they eat and drink deep of its life-giving sustenance. A shepherd leads, a shepherd feeds, and a shepherd protects. The reasons God, rod, and staff bring so much comfort to David is because they were tools to protect the sheep. As we said, a shepherd protects the sheep from wolves and bears and all kinds of predators. A shepherd protects the sheep from each other. And a shepherd also protects the sheep from themselves when they wander off with false doctrines or sin habits. And in Matthew 18 and Luke 15, we're told that the good shepherd will leave the 99 to go after the one. God is chasing after the lost sheep. He wants you to be in the flock. There's no shadow he won't light up, no mountain he won't climb up coming after you. There's no wall he can't kick down or lie he won't tear down coming after you. He desperately wants a relationship with you. But the Bible says that he will not force himself upon you. He patiently stands at the door and waits for you to open it. You see, godly leadership isn't about power and position. It's about serving and protecting. Good leaders look to the good of their followers before their own personal gain. Good leaders strive to have integrity and strive to be trustworthy. Good leaders sacrifice, willing to sacrifice it all. You see, Jesus, as the good shepherd, has protected us from our ultimate enemies of sin, Satan, and death by sacrificing his own life. And when we follow the good shepherd, everyone benefits. If you call yourself a Christian today, you are a sheep in God's flock. You need to submit to the good shepherd's lead. In Scripture, you are actually called to be shepherded by brothers and sisters in Christ. But you are also called to be a shepherd. All of us have influence. All of us have people in our lives that I believe are God-ordained relationships that he has placed in our lives that we can help lead closer to him. And if we are Christ followers and he is the good shepherd, then we as little Christ followers need to be little shepherds. 
And that's our big idea today. We lead best when we follow Jesus. Real quick, I want to tell you a story. About 2010, we were able to take our three-year-old Hunter to Disney. It's so fun to experience Disney through a kid's eyes. Hunter has always loved his cars and trucks, and uh, it's no wonder that one of his favorite movies was Cars. Um, and I have a theory about the movie Cars. Uh, people think that Lightning McQueen was the hero. He was the bright red, shiny, new, successful NASCAR with lots of attitude. But I believe Tomater was the real star. You see, McQueen was great, but he was a jerk. He was a jerk to everyone. He was only out for himself. He really didn't care about anyone else. But Mater, the rusty old tow truck, befriended McQueen. And through that relationship, Mater's humility and kindness and goodness changed McQueen. And it made him better. I heard a preacher once say that as Christians, we're all tow trucks. When a car is broken down on the side of the road, they are helpless until a tow truck can come and take them to the place where they can be fixed. And as Christians, we don't save anyone. But we can come alongside someone in their time of need and take them to the master mechanic and take them to the good shepherd. Only he can save them. Only he can heal them. We shepherd them to the good shepherd. Jesus made it clear that following him meant being a tow truck. And so I want you this morning to think about who in your life can you shepherd. Maybe it's someone at work. Maybe it's a team that you coach. Maybe you're shepherding yours or someone else's child. Maybe you can provide a need for a brother or sister in Christ. Maybe there's someone who isn't even part of God's flock that needs to be led to the good shepherd by you. Or maybe you know someone who has wandered off. And maybe God is calling you to gently restore them and lead them back to the good shepherd. I don't know how God is calling each one of us to shepherd this morning. But I do know he's calling. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, follow my example as I follow Christ. We lead best when we follow Jesus. Jesus leads, and he's asking us to lead in a very uncommon way. Most of us are not used to it. The greatest in God's kingdom are the biggest servants. First of all, we must make sure that we're following the good shepherd ourselves, but we must also take up the call to lead others to him. It's not an easy journey. But my dad always told me that nothing worth having comes easy. It's difficult to be a sheep, but with Jesus as our shepherd, it's good to be a sheep. And remember, he has called you to lead and to feed and to protect others as well. For those of you in position to be a shepherd today, the challenge is simple. Who do you need to lead closer to Jesus? How is God leading you to do it? And maybe you've never trusted Jesus before. For you, the challenge will be to surrender and confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior this very morning. You may need to repent of trying to live your own life by your own rules and surrender. Maybe you need to talk to someone about being baptized and accepting the gift of forgiveness and the gift of the Holy Spirit. You may need to trust God as the good shepherd for the very first time today and see that he is good. And there'll be people in the back of the room ready to have that conversation with you if you're here on campus. If you're online or if you're thinking about this later, you can always visit www.greenwoodchristian.com slash next steps. We'll, we'll take you and we'll help you on the next step in your journey. Will you let Jesus lead today? Will you learn how to lead others like he leads you? You can trust the King of Kings. Trust the Good Shepherd today. Let him lead and watch how he teaches you to lead others. You see, we lead best when we follow Jesus. Let's pray. God, thank you for being the good shepherd. Thank you for leading us through some of life's most difficult moments. Thank you for being there for us all the time, perfectly leading us. And God, we want to lead like you lead. We don't want to be another headline in the news. We want to humbly serve and protect 
and feed and lead like Jesus. God, open our eyes and open our hearts to opportunities that you place before us. Help us to know those opportunities and to have the confidence and faith to walk boldly into those situations and help people draw closer to you. God, we love you. God, we thank you so much for all that you have done for us, and we pray that we would not hold on to it ourselves, but that we would be generous in the love you've given us, and we would serve those around us to the best of our abilities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I count on one thing, the same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out, working all things out. Yes, I will. Lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will. God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. Working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest. your name. be good to yourselves, be good to each other. Have a great week.